This episode of Open Source Tonight was recorded in front of a live audience on Twitch. Enjoy the show. This is Open Source Tonight for February 12, 2020, and I'm your host, Vincent Maggard. And today, as always, I'm joined by my great co-host, which is here more often than Billy anymore for some reason. Poor Billy is a busy guy, Carmen Shields. Hello, everyone. How are y'all doing today? I'm glad to be joining you, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be joining you as well. Right now, if you're watching the video, that's actually being switched by Carmen, and I'm doing the audio for the radio side. So there's two broadcasts going on right now, as well, simultaneously as two broadcasts, there is two ways, or two people switching, you know, or, or two people doing the mix. I'm mixing the audio, Carmen is switching or mixing the video, and uh, yeah, so there you go. So Carmen, uh, how was your week? I am doing good. I'm doing good. It's been a pretty relaxed week, taking it easy. Getting things done. That doesn't seem like it fits together, but it's all good. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, Carmen. So uh, without further ado, I guess we should hop into the news for this week. So uh, let's get started here. Uh, so we're going to kind of go from, in my opinion, the stuff that I don't care about as much to the stuff I care about. And again, feel free to jump in. The Ubuntu devs are pushing for, or maybe just devs here, are pushing for Unicode 13 support in Ubuntu 2004, which is coming out later this year. So, oh for, boy! So, for those that don't know, Unicode is a text encoding format that, among other things, has emojis in it. So, if you type an emoji, that's technically Unicode in action right there. So, anyway, so this is something that they are trying to do. Unicode 13, it says here, is due for release on March the 10th, and they would like that new support to be in Ubuntu 2004, which will be coming out in April. So do you think they'll be able to add that support that quick, Carmen? And uh, do you think they should? I think that it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the Unicode standard, as I think all of us are aware Unicode... Well, I shouldn't say all of us are aware because it's something that can easily be looked over. I'm not trying to sound condescending. Unicode is what's behind all the emojis on iOS, on Android, on everything else. And basically when you update Unicode, you're updating what people can see. So if people are using new emojis that are part of a new version of Unicode and you do not have that update, then you just see... Usually you see like a box of a question mark. It all depends on the system, how it renders it. But something to that extent, like you either won't see it or you'll see some sort of blank representation. So I think or it's Or sometimes you'll see step. a bunch of garbly gook where there should be normal text. Yeah, that happens too. Yep. So, uh, you know, I mean, as a developer, uh, you know, Unicode support is always nice to have. So I guess it's good to have it, but... I haven't really ran into issues in 1804 without this, but that being said, it's not actually even out yet anyway. So, But um, I don't know. I don't really feel like there's much to say about it. Yeah, I guess they should add it if they can, right? I mean, it, it's going to keep the, the LTS more stable. Well, I shouldn't say more stable, but more usable for the long term, right? Right, that's true. And that's always a good thing. All right, moving on to our next story, I guess, unless you have something else to add. KDE Plasma 15 or 5.18's LTS has been released. Fans of the KDE desktop, you will probably be very excited to hear this. So there you go. Some new features that is being added and functionality as well as some general improvements include their new emoji picker, which if you listen to my open source uh, news segment for Radio Lex, you already heard about several weeks ago. Um, so that's one thing. They're now going to make GTK apps play much nicer style-wise with the QT apps in KDE, even though they always did a pretty good job of that, in my opinion, anyway. So, hey, more improvements is nice, but I felt like they already was doing quite well at that. So that's good. Among other features include functional uh, fractional scaling on X11 systems with with less gl glitchy support, improved touch friendliness for the kickoff launch menu in the corner, and among several other features such as NVIDIA GPU information in K System Guard now. You know, interesting stuff. They got a weather widget in there, mm -hmm. a redesigned volume widget. So um, what about you, Carmen? You know, I don't use KDE, so for me, there's, you know, these seem nice, but I don't use it, so I guess I don't really... I don't really have nothing to really say here, do I? I don't use it. It's okay. I mean, 
I don't use KDE either. I know that you're a big fan of KDE. I'm not a big but... fan of KDE. Nothing against <laughs> people that use KDE. It's it's a not a bad desktop. It's just that for my taste, I don't like it. But there's nothing wrong with I'm it if you kidding. like KDE. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, folks. No. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see a new update. Just a natural progression of things. They have a new emoji selector that looks fun. I like I, I like having emoji functionality. Got to have your emojis. And really, <laughs> it looks like this kind of looks all like minor stuff. So, I mean, like, you know, it's not like they redid the whole concept of KDE yet. So, if you like KDE, you'll probably like this. If you don't like KDE, then you probably won't care. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much my sentiment exactly. Yeah, I think that pretty much makes a lot of sense. So, I uh, guess there's really not much else to talk about that. Gnome, I guess we can move on to the Gnome story here. Gnome 3.36 is new default background. It's supposed to be really cool. You know, nothing against the OMG Ubuntu writer. Or writers, I don't remember how many they have. Oh, you know, these are interesting looking backgrounds. I have them on the stream for anyone watching in video on the recording. You have, oh, how do you read that? A what? Oh, a wait a A wait is how most people pronounce it. A a wait a day. A wait a we're probably both pronouncing it wrong. I always pronounce Oweta it Aweta. Morning. I've heard other people pronounce it that and way. So You have Aweta Night. I mean, you're all right. I think that's a subjective opinion. That's subjective. Every, everything but, you know. in the Linux world, Vincent's going to go on a rant, everybody's got their own way of pronouncing it. But everyone knows you just pick your favorite Linux YouTuber and pronounce it the way they do. Shout out to Mr. Joe wow. Collins' Easy Linux Project. That's how I pronounce things. He's got the right idea. Anyway, well, for most most words, Caden Live, he pronounces it slightly different than me, but that's pretty much it. We pretty much agree on every other pronunciation, so. <laughs> there we go. And anyway. I think there's some exciting news we haven't covered yet. Oh, what's that? Ubuntu? Oh, yeah. I was about to go to that. Okay, I thought you were talking about something that wasn't in the, the official thing. All right, yeah. Um, I'm, Ubuntu, uh, I'm putting a surprise on you. <laughs> Ubuntu 2004's release date and planned features has been set, folks. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? The 23rd of April of this year, we're going to have the phenomenal, or not, who knows, depending on how it launches, 2004 Ubuntu Focal Aphasia. Now, that's a word I do not know how to pronounce. Carmen, chime in. How do you pronounce that? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to read this. We're doing Focal Fosha. Hold up. Hold up. Can we? Carmen is now determining how to read this, everyone. He is the expert on staff here, except for he's not on staff, and he is going to figure out how to read this. We can. I was going to bring up text to speech, but I don't have that utility installed. I was going to be like, we're cheating because I'm just, I don't text know. Text to speech doesn't Osha? pronounce stuff right half the time anyway. So that. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll just Google it right here on the stream. According to Google, it's fo, F O W, sha. Two syllables. Fo, sha. Fo, sha. Fo, sha. All right, oh, well, sure. good luck with Vincent being able to pronounce that. Anyway, <laughs> some information on the timeline for release. Testing week was January 9th. UI freeze was March 19th, and or will be March 19th. Sorry, we're not there yet. Ubuntu's 2004 beta, the last release, will be uh, out on April the 2nd. Or actually, I guess that will be the first one. And so right now I'm on, guess, with the alpha or whatever it is because I've got it running in a VM. I'm on the daily builds. It, the kernel freeze is going to happen on April the 9th. And finally, the final release candidate will come out on April the 16th. They'll get their bugs forked out in their RC release, their release candidate release. And then on the 23rd, if everything goes right, should be released on time. However, I don't know if you remember the 1804 release. They had some issues around the 1804 release. They were uh, a little bit behind. Not too much. I think they still got it out on the, the correct day, but it was like towards the end of the day. And uh, they had some issues, I think, with their download page or something as well. My memory's kind of um, sporadic on this, but I seem to remember something to that effect. Do you remember that? I do not. Okay, well, <laughs> so either I'm forgetting stuff or you just don't use Linux that much, which, to be fair, it could be either one of those because it's kind of been a little bit of both. could be either one. It either could be one. either one. That's right. But they have got some planned features here. ZFS install support is being added, or improved, I should say. New wallpapers. A smaller ISO image is going to be available for download. A lighting extension will be added to Thunderbird when you install it. Multi-display support will be added in GDM. 
which is really nice because as someone that has multiple displays, it would be really nice for the GNOME Display Manager to support that because right now it just shows the other screen as like the background. I mean, it works, but, you know, be nice. Fractional scaling in the X org session will be added. Gaming-related improvements will be added. <laughs> Better GNOME Shell performance will be added. So there you go, folks. That's the story on that. So there you go. Yep, and you it's can great. And you can download the uh, right now the live daily builds if you'd like. We will have a link in the show notes to the article, which will have a link to that if you want to check it out. It's and, great, guys. And some other news this week: the Vivaldi open source web browser has added some new features. I just now seen this. This is today, folks. This is this is fresh off the. Um, Fresh off the grill, fresh out of the oven news right here for you. They've added improvements to their pop-out video player, among other tweaks, as of today. And version 2.11 is now out. It is the first major desktop update of the browser this year. So, there you go, folks. Brand new. You can download it and check it out. Seems interesting. Uh, some people definitely like it. It's okay. I still like Chrome and Firefox better myself. But, uh, you know, for, if you like a lot of keyboard shortcuts, from what I've heard, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts support. And by heard, I mean I'm reading in the article here because, honestly, I haven't used this much. But, again, the fact they improved the picture and picture modes, cool, because I can see a use case for that, right? Well, I'll be honest with you. I haven't used Vivaldi much, but I've always thought it had an interesting interface. Like, if we're on the website here, I think it... It kind of reminds me of Opera, right? Kind of of Opera, but it's isn't it is it derivative from Opera? I don't remember. It, no, it's based on Chrome, or Chromium. No, I know, but I meant like I think it had some sort of roots in the Opera project somehow. That people came over from Opera because Opera now is Chrome based. It's been for a long time. I could be wrong though. I don't want to be spouting out incorrect information. Well, Opera is based on Chrome, uh, Chromium, so I'm aware of that. I'm not sure if they're connected as far as the way you're describing. Maybe they are at some point. I don't know. Um, so, but I don't feel like there's really too much to say about that. Uh, another story here that came in uh, today, uh, but this was earlier today. I just now seen it though. Is the Mate Desktop 1.24 has released uh, to the public? And it has some new features as well. And I like the Mate desktop, so this is one I actually have some stake in. I do run it on one of my machines full time. So I think I have the right to talk about it a little bit. So among other changes that has been added to it include system monitor panel support for the MVNE drive. So you can get some stats on those. Don't have any of those in my machine. They're all older systems. But hey, if I get a newer system... Uh, good to know. Various high display DPI improvements has been added. Mouse app support for acceleration profiles. The menu editor now supports undo and redo. That last one, man, I really am happy about. Redo is awesome in that. That, that should have been there for a long time if you ask me. And uh, yeah, so other than that, really not too much to say, I guess. The other thing I'll say too is, is that it says here that this will... They're going to ship this version in Ubuntu Mate 2004. So if you want uh, long-term support Ubuntu release with it, you can do that. And Ubuntu Mate is a um, a good Linux distribution in my personal opinion. But they, they do have some other stuff it's here. It's fantastic. They do have some other stuff here too. They have some Do Not Disturb settings in the notifications area. A new disk utility mounting thing. So you can mount a disk image. And a new date and time app. So, pretty cool stuff. Again, we'll put a link in the show descriptions for more information. Oh, another thing too. They also added some changes to their archive manager. As well as their image viewer. For adding support for Wayland and embedded color profiles. So, it looks like... Oh, and they, well, they've added a lot of stuff. Also, window manager. They've updated their, min, their window manager micro. Or Marco, sorry. Marco is how it's pronounced. My apologies. And so that's pretty cool. That will give them some new resize border options, render render control buttons on pixel in pixel perfect pixel perfect ways, according to the article on the high DPI displays. <sighs> so Carmen over here that actually has displays that are high DPI laying around, maybe you'll care about this. Maybe I think everyone should be on high DPI displays. Yeah, I mean I'm it, just kidding. I'm just kidding, folks. 
I mean, I it, it will I happen probably. I'm sure I'll eventually get a high DPI display. Just I think it's HD hard to for... ask because. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's hard to ask everyone to do that because you still have to think about the price. You have to think about yep. the availability and not everyone's ready to switch. Like I'm not going to sit here and because everyone needs to have them right now or even in 10 years. Well, but, you know, I, I wish everyone had them. I mean, for, for me, it comes down to, to for me, it comes down to price and to the fact that I don't feel the need to rush out and do it because right. it, it's, I get a, that. you know, it's an expense. You know, I've got two nice HD monitors here on my workstation and I don't have a workstation that's capable of handling high resolution display output like UHD, 4K. So right now, as far as I'm concerned, I don't see the need because I would have to get a new machine, have to get a better graphics card in that machine to be able to handle it. I'd have to replace my monitors. And Linux support for high DPI, from what I've heard, is hit or miss in so many ways. It's a lot like Windows. Windows has a lot of issues with it, too. So I'm just like, you know, right. let's wait until they get Apple's engineers over here to contribute some code so that it actually works really good. To be fair, I haven't really heard much about there being issues lately, and I've heard a lot of improvements are being added. So maybe it's time to make the move. Who knows? But Make the move. It's a big move. Yeah. But all I know is that for right now, I'm not interested in making the move. Like when the pricing comes down and when I feel the need and I have the financial uh, to support buying a new system, I'm going to do it. And I am looking at getting a new workstation at some point to be able to have a higher power system. So maybe a System76 system or something like that. Those can support high DPI output. And so who knows? Maybe I'll eventually do that. One nice thing I will say about having a machine that, I mean, this is obvious, but... For those that, for whatever the reason, didn't know or didn't think about it, with a high DPI, you know, a display card, right, and a computer that can handle it, you can always just output HD, right? You can always do that. So, you know, I probably will do it in a partial process, right, where maybe I'll first get a higher-end computer that it will have, you know, support for this with a nice graphics card that can handle it. And then slowly, yep. as I get around to it, I'll slowly replace maybe one monitor at a time with a, a UHD monitor, right? So, yeah. Any thoughts on that, Carmen? That would like the way to go. No thoughts from this end. I've been having a fun time doing the show with you well, so far, Vincent. That's great. One other thing I just was thinking about, though, uh, related to the UHD situation. Uh, most streaming services on Linux don't even support streaming UHD. So, for example, Netflix, you cannot stream UHD on Linux. And you can, I don't believe on, uh, I don't even know if Hulu has support for it. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I know that on Netflix, they have limitations. I, I know on YouTube, you can stream full UHD slash 4K. So if you're like me and you watch a lot of YouTube, then that's probably all right. But if you watch like a lot of Netflix, you're not going to really be able to notice the difference because Netflix limits, I believe, it to 720p on Linux right now as the max resolution, even if you have the bandwidth for more. It's one of those DRM things. Well, so. that's not even 1080p. So uh, mean, that's, that's what just... I'm saying. It's... <laughs> you know, that's what that's my oh, whole boy. point. You're, you know, you're not going to notice a difference uh, viewing a 720p image on a 1080 monitor or a 4K monitor, right? That's that's the point. That here. is great. That's that's just wonderful. So it's but, just great. But anyway, you will notice if you're watching uh, YouTube, of course. So that's always nice. If you're watching Open Source tonight, subscribe to the YouTube channel Open Source Tonight. We're not in 4K slash UHD <laughs> slash DCI 4K forward you cinema. Look. We're not saying it's in UHD, but at least it's in 1080p for this episode and not That's in true. 720p like Netflix. We're in 1080p. We keep it the maximum resolution, even though that's not the maximum resolution at all. That's just an arbitrary thing I just said. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could be in 8K resolution and just go crazy and just be like, here, this is loads of resolution for you folks. We're doing it in 10K. Even though there's not even a standard for that yet. Is there? That uh, probably is somewhere. I don't know. Things are always changing in the video world. Anyway, but let's hop into today's main topic. If we don't have nothing else to say about that, I think we covered it pretty good, right? I think we're good. All right. Well, Ubuntu 2004's LTS is coming out in a few months, and I don't know if anyone's heard, but I actually tried downloading it and testing it out, and I'm very interested to see where things go with Ubuntu 2004. I'm particularly interested to see what happens around Caden Live on Ubuntu 1804 or 2004, sorry. 
because it's exciting. It, we will actually be able to install a later version of Caden Live from the repos that should have really good system support. I know you can install it via Snap or App Image, and I've tried that, but I find that it's got a lot of issues. Because if my understanding is correct, Ubuntu 18.04 does not have proper QT, uh, QU, QUML, or QML, I think it is, support, and Caden Live is using that for their timeline now, among some other things. And so, you know, proper support of that is a must. But my understanding is 2004 will have that support baked in. So, uh, you know, that's the main thing that's got me interested because I would like to see if the new Caden Live is interesting. When the new Caden Live comes out, you know, it piques my interest to see because I used to use it all the time. Am I going to move back? Right. So, but uh, yeah. Also, speaking of which, we should probably switch back to news. Because I just found two new news stories that probably make sense to talk about. One's a video editor. So while we're on that train, open source, the open source video editor OpenShot, which I've also used before, has gotten a major update as of today. Now I want to go out and run. Oh my god! They, oh, I'm downloading this. It has hardware acceleration. Woohoo! It's about time everybody got on board with this idea, people. Woo! -hoo! There you go. You saw it here first. Hardware acceleration. Awesome. Awesome. I got to try this out. <laughs> awesome. Save file recovery. It also supports uh, edit lists from Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. Awesome. You can export and import those. So that will make it easier to use uh, this editor with people that are using Final Cut and are using Premiere Pro. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome, people. Also, I might want to point out that part of OpenShot is written in Python, so good editor in a good language. Just saying. <laughs> there you go. It's a happy editor. It's having a good time. So we've got new support for save file recovery. Other changes include a rewritten keyframe system because keyframing is very important. Better SVG handling. Their SVG support, I loved it in the old version because you could, your lower thirds and stuff, your titles would be SVGs and you could like custom edit them and it would automatically update. And it was like a built-in thing. And it was really cool. And I, man, I tell you, OpenShot, I, I really liked it. It just wasn't quite where I wanted it, it per, precision-wise on the cuts and stuff. That's really the only thing that I had against it. It was... Actually, even in the old version, it played video back pretty stable. I could live with it as it was. So, uh, you know, this is making me really think, you know, if they get those, you know, a few tweaks I want, you know, maybe I'll move to it again. Uh, you know, Exciting. I, I, I just want to say I have no loyalty to any editor. <laughs> I just want an editor that works and can do what I need. And OpenShot can do it. Caden Live can do it. Olive can do it. These days, video editing on Linux is getting better and better. So I'm very happy about there that. There you go. So, but you can download OpenShot right now if you're on Ubuntu 16.04 LTS or above using their new PPA, or not their new PPA, but their PPA, and uh, try it out. And uh, just in case anyone's watching, I might uh, post a video on the Open Source Tonight channel later about this editor, or maybe I'll do it on the Vincent Maggard channel. I need to post a video there because I haven't posted there in a while. And that's a video-related channel anyways, so... Who knows? Kind of feels exciting. like either one. But anyway, <laughs> Firefox 73 has also been released. I don't really know how I managed to miss that one. It has been uh, some new features that have been added include some accessibility features, which is always nice. So some support such as paid zoom, some changes on that has been added. So that's always good. And they've also got some other things you can do like scaling under the language and appearance settings under preferences. I guess that's the paid Zoom they were talking about there, actually. And they apparently are going to uh, lose per site Zoom levels. What do you think about that? So it won't keep your Zoom levels across pages, I guess is what that means. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing to change. I would think logically you'd want to keep your Zoom levels across page pages, but I don't know. Yes. I don't know. See, that's what I'm thinking. Any Zoom levels you make on websites will still stick. Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so I apparently don't know what this is. It's Oh, it's just the default Zoom level Folks, that changes. Folks, you heard okay. it here first. You heard uh, it here first. Okay, Vincent I see what this is. So this, this is He's I, not sure what's hold going up, on. Hold up, hold up, hold <laughs> up. I understand what's going on. I'm trying to explain here. So apparently this is the default Zoom level, but if you set a specific site Zoom level, it will stay the same. So that's what they're talking about. <laughs> 
and other changes. It includes support for high contrast changes in the um, in the page backgrounds and stuff. I guess is this built in? Yeah, I guess it's built in. Uh, oh, this is only on Windows. Okay, well we don't care about that. This is the open source people. We're we're using Linux over here and maybe Mac OS. I don't know. Anyway, if you care about that, it's in the show notes. Uh, you know, it's pretty obvious anyway what it is. Just adds contra- high contrast so people that have disabilities can see. They really should have that on Linux and Mac OS too, though. You know, people that are disabled, they use other platforms than Windows. I'm just saying. Network settings tab in the system will now add Next DNS as a DNS over HTTPS provider where it joins cloud failure. Exciting. Yep, so you can get your encrypted DNS, folks. Right there on that. Finally, a bunch of security fixes has also been added. So that is always good. So you can go ahead and check that out now. As always, should be in your repos for your Linux distribution of choice shortly. If you're on Windows, you're going to actually have to go out and do some work called download the executable or Mac OS. Unless they have an auto updater on those platforms. Do you know if they have an auto updater on those platforms? On Windows or Mac OS, I think it's done by application, but I could be wrong. But that's what I'm talking about is by been, application. Does well, Firefox have Mac, it? Well, Mac, it, it depends because if you download something from the Windows Store, I'm pretty sure it updates through the Windows Store and the same for the Mac App Store. Yeah, that is the now, case. I think now Apple does have like a software updater for its own software, and I don't think that applies generally it, to it, other pieces of software. It doesn't. I'm talking about Pacific. So when you're on Windows and Mac, to get auto-updating, your application has to build it in. So, for example, Electron actually right. supports that. So, if you build an Electron app, you can have it auto update uh, on those platforms. And Linux support for that kind of works. I say kind of because it's it's not really default in there, but there's like plugins you can use to make it happen. So, uh, yeah, everybody, that's that's pretty cool. And also, Elementary OS they did a point release because why not? So, uh, Elementary OS five point one is out. Adds some security fixes, app updates, and moves them to kernel 5.3. You know, so that's always nice. Adds new hardware improvements. Adds support for newer MacBook modes and AMD Navi, I guess that is, GPUs. So that's always nice. So um, any thoughts, Carmen, on elementary OS? I've never really used it, so I don't really have too many, too many thoughts on it. Very well. Very well. Well, folks, I think that covers the news. We went back to it, so we can go back to Ubuntu 2004. So, Carmen, tell me, do you think that Ubuntu 2004, when it comes out, the official release, are you thinking you're going to move to it? Or are you thinking you're going to uh, wait a while and see what happens? What's your plans on that? I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie. It looks pretty slick, and I like a lot of the improvements they're making. But... Well, I don't know if I can really say I like them. I need to do more research. I don't really know that much about Ubuntu 2004, so I retract that statement. But I will say that as long as it's stable, I'll probably move to it. I'm on 1804 right now, so I'm a little bit behind. I'm a little bit behind the times. Yeah, well, so am I. I mean, 2004 is not out yet. It's only on the the uh, daily builds, which I would argue is not stable enough for any production use. So don't use that in production, people. But, uh, you know, if you've got a spare machine you want to just test it out and you're not using for anything or a VM, you could always do that right now. But, I mean, it, for me, I like 2004 because, like I said, of the Caden Live stuff I was talking about earlier. And then the other big thing for me is the default theme in Ubuntu 2004 looks way better than the old Ubuntu theme. I know I'm going to get some haters in the comments about that one because some people thought that old theme was great. But I think that the new theme looks better myself. And, uh, you know, you can always custom theme it using the tweak tool. Which, at this point, I've been using the Aweda Dark theme, uh, which GNOME ships, and I like it, actually. I used to not really like the default GNOME themes, but I've gotten used to this theme now, so who knows? Might just use that on 2004, like I am on 1804, but uh, I think that I will probably hold off on moving immediately, but I don't know, maybe not too long, because I definitely want to try out Caden Live, but I don't want to have my machine have major problems if something goes wrong, so probably two or three weeks out, maybe a month. I think the theme is what I was thinking of when I said it looked good. I feel embarrassed, but hey, we all make mistakes. But I don't really – there's another feature, but I don't want to say it because I think I might be imagining this. So I'm not going to say that. But if it's the feature I'm thinking it is, then I'm looking forward to it. If not, then we will find out. All righty, everybody. Well, uh, 
I think that seems pretty interesting. This episode, I think, is going to be a little short because, honestly, I can't really think of what more we can say about 18, or 2004. It looks good. I'm interested to see what happens with it. And as far as for the open shot editor, I am very interested in actually trying that out. So I will probably make a video later today on that, actually, if I have time and uh, get that posted. Uh, so with work and stuff, I'm kind of busy, so I don't know how much time I'm going to have for that. But if I have time, I think I might end up doing that. Right. So, but anyway, uh, everybody, thanks so much for watching slash listening to, because now we have video, Open Source Tonight. I'm your host, Vincent Maggard. You can find me throughout the week on opensourcetonight.com. On our podcast, Open Source Tonight, of course, which you're watching or listening to right now. Find me on Twitter, at Vincent Maggard. Find me on the web, at vincentmaggard.com. And you can always find me on YouTube, at Vincent Maggard. Carmen, where can they find you throughout the week? CarmenShields.com, YouTube.com forward slash the cool Carmen on Twitter, Wonder Shield, Snapchat, Carmen Shields, all one word. Pretty much but if you go to CarmenShields.com, you'll find all the information you need to know. And I believe I have links to everything as well on my website. But anyway, folks, until next week, thanks for listening to Open Source Tonight or watching. And until next week, goodbye everybody. This is Carmen and Vincent signing off. <laughs>